Hey guys, I'm here, and today we're going to describe the Riemann hypothesis in five minutes. First, the Riemann hypothesis begins with a very simple question. What is 1 over 1 to the 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 1 plus 1 over 3 to the 1 dot dot dot? That equals to infinity if you take in sequences in series. It's, it blows up. It goes on forever. But what's 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared dot dot dot? That is equal to pi squared over 6. That's an interesting number. We got 1 over 1 to the 3 plus 1 over 1 to the 2 to the 3 plus 1 over 3 to the 3. Uh, that actually equals 1.202. It's not very interesting. 1 over 1 to the 4 plus 1 over 2 to the 4 dot dot dot. That equals pi uh, to the 4th over 90. This is a very interesting function. And scientists have asked if this function gives any interesting values. And what that's led scientists to realize, and any preschooler to realize, is that if you plug, uh, if you have this function 1 over 1 to the s plus 1 over 2 to the s plus 1 over 3 to the s dot dot dot, and s is less than or equal to 1, then this goes to infinity which is intuitive because uh, this is going to infinity and anything less than that these numbers will be bigger uh, 1 over 1 to the negative 2 is just 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared so if s is less than or equal to 1 then it goes to infinity it's not very interesting and scientists were sort of discouraged they were just like that's sort of annoying then this comes around it turns out this function is actually equal to 1 over 1 minus 2 to the s times 1 over 1 minus 3 to the s what, oh sorry 1 over 2 to the s times 1 minus 1 minus 1 over 5 to the s, 1, min 1 over 1 minus 7 to the s, and uh, these are actually going by primes. These numbers are going by primes. So then that baffled scientists. They were just like, what the heck? Uh, maybe we can connect this function to prime primes. And then this guy uh, named uh, Riemann comes in, and he's just like, well, uh, I have a new function that I spent years in my basement working on, and the new function is if I can find a brush that works. His new function is called the Riemann zeta function, which is the focus of the millennium question. Uh, it's 1 over uh, 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus s times the summation of n equals 0 to the infinity of 1 over 1, uh, 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 multiplied by uh, k equals 0 to n uh, of negative 1 to the k and n uh, choose k multiplied by k plus uh, 1 uh, to the negative s and well, uh, I don't have time to prove this right now of course it's 5 minutes but uh, 1 over 1 to s plus 1 over 2 to s plus 1 over 3 to s is equal to that um, except for the fact that when this blows up when this is when s is less than or equal to 1 you can actually plug that stuff into this equation and get a real answer so of course if you plug 2 to in, if you plug 2 into this equation uh, you're going to get pi squared over 6. If you plus 4 into this equation, you're going to get pi 4 over 90. But if you pr if you plug a negative number in here, you're going to get an actual number. And what happens is, if you plug any negative even number in here, uh, even number, this function is going to be equal to 0. This function is going to be equal to 0. Are there any interesting value? other interesting values for which this is 0? Well, 1 half plus... 21.02203i and 1 half plus 14.134725i if you plug these into this function you're going to get zero the hypothesis Riemann hypothesis basically states that uh, if it's not a negative even number then the only values for which this function is going to be equal to zero are complex numbers for which the real part is going to be half are all complex numbers uh, which in for which this is zero have a real part that is half that's what you got to prove and if this is correct this actually proves uh, Gauss's prime number theorem, Gauss's prime number theorem, which basically states um, that a good estimate for the number of prime numbers less than x is zero to the x, uh, zero to the x dt over ln t. This is a good estimate, and if the Riemann hypothesis is true, this estimate is always going to be within square root of x times natural log of x of the real number of prime values. Yeah, so that's the Riemann hypothesis. Good luck on solving it.